women have been pushed to one side, okay? Priests rather than priestesses. God the Father, God the Son, mm. and God the Holy Mackerel. I mean, what happened? You know, the Holy Ghost, I mean. What happened to, <laughs> you know, what happened to God the Mother? What happened to God the Daughter, do you What's see? What's the answer? The answer is, again, priests projecting masculinity on God. Mm. Rather, <clears throat> so, you know, actually, it could be God is a woman. Absolutely. You know, I, I mean, any woman, any woman God could create a man, no problem. But there's no way that a masculine God could create a woman. We're getting very philosophical here. And I know. Possibly We're trying to slightly keep to spiritual. Yes. Can we, for the, for the good of the viewers, just try and keep, come back to the simplicity of the science? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, with the, the quantum theory of, of of the vortex is to is to explain subatomic particles of matter in terms of the vortex it is a new quantum theory mm. okay so that the vortex explains away the properties of materiality right so we're in this world and we think it's solid and it's real but it's not that's an illusion created by the vortex so the spin of the energy in the vortex creates S stay putness, the static inertia of mass, right. okay, the, soli the seeming solidity of the particle. All the forces, the electric, the forces of, of, of nature are very easy to explain. It's simply that the, the vortex has no surface, it just gets thinner and thinner and thinner. So the vortex extends into infinity. So the thick vortex energy, the dense vortex energy at the centre mm. is what we perceive as a subatomic particle. Right. The thin vortex energy extending into infinity is what we perceive as space, right. as electric charge, mm. as magnetism, mm. you see. So as vortices, they may be at a distance, but as they're over, the, the vortex energy is overlapping and interacting because they're dynamic. So they're whirling apart or whirling together, depending mm. upon the direction of mm. spin. And now we come back to Albert Einstein. In 1919, when Albert Einstein was, was recognized as the most celebrated scientist in the world mm. through his theory of relativity, he went to New York and he was stepping off the ship and a reporter called out to him, Albert, can you explain your theory of relativity in a single sentence and Albert said yes move matter and you also move space and time right so, so he matter was and space and time are connected are linked. Oh. and that's what we can explain with the vortex matter is the dense center of the vortex mm. and space is the extension of the vortex into infinity and time is the relationship of one vortex to another, the movement in one vortex relative to the space of another vortex. So what's the significance of this for the everyday man or woman on the street? Well, the significance is that we explain away the properties of the material world. We realise there's nothing there, there's nothing in the vortex. Energy is not a thing. It's more like a thought. You see, if the whole material world is just created out of whirlpools and wavy gigs mm. of, of energy, then the whole idea that something exists to move is swept away. All we have is the movement. Right. And again, this is what we get from Einstein. Everything is relative to the speed of light. The speed of light is just the speed of movement. Everything is relative to movement. So it's all about speed. It's all about speed. So what we realise through this vortex theory is that we're living in a dream because movement, where no thing exists to move, is abstract reality. So we realise actually our whole world is made of impulses. So it's more like we're inside a computer programme. Right. You know, when you look at your computer, it looks real. You see all these pictures and these images, but there's nothing there but impulses. Okay. If you rattle the, you, 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 if you rattle your computer, you know that little people don't drop out. 
Oh, where's that beautiful actress I just saw? She doesn't drop out of the computer. It's just little impulses. So unsatisfactory. Though, Terribly isn't unsatisfactory, it? yes. So the thing is that this vortex theory shows that the illusion of mayas, which again is the yogic philosophers the, in, in, in India, spoke about the great illusion called maya. Mm. Because they saw it, they looked into the atom, they realized, you know, the atom's got a a lot in common with Tony Blair, there's nothing in there but spin. It's all an illusion, you see the idea? So we can believe in the material world like we believe in politicians. Okay. Okay, so there's nothing there, it's all an illusion. So what we realize from this is that we are, we're, we're more in a mind. This world is more a thought. The universe is more a thought than a, than, than, than a thing. It's, 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 it's more thought than thing. The particle is more thought than thing. And, a body of thought is a mind, so the universe is a body of these quantum particles, mm. whirlpools of light. It is more a mind than anything else. And this is what Albert Einstein was trying to explain. Albert Einstein is difficult to understand, not because of his mathematics or his theories, mm. but because of his world view. Einstein held or said, matter and light are real, but there's no substance underlying them. Okay. There's nothing there, you see. And so ultimately he was a metaphysician, more than a physicist. As was Isaac Newton, by the way. He was a very much an alchemist and a metaphysician and a philosopher. Mm. You can't be a physicist without being a philosopher. No. When you get down to the quantum reality, the nitty gritty, you find that with Richard Feynman, you find that with, with all these great physicists. They, they turn into metaphysicians and philosophers. And so what we realize through the vortex and this is the crux of quantum theory, mm. is that particles are not acts of material substance. They are acts of consciousness. Because a thought is an act of consciousness. An abstraction is an act of consciousness. So the bedrock of reality is consciousness. And what I realized through my physics is that whereas particles of energy are all divided into bits, the consciousness underlying them is one, is indivisible. Mm. So conscious awareness, you know, a lot of people debate about is it consciousness or is it awareness? Well, actually, it's awareness. The awareness inside you, the conscious awareness behind your eyes looking at me, behind your ears, beyond your ears listening to me, okay? That conscious awareness is the same conscious awareness behind my eyes looking at you, beyond my ears listening to you, because consciousness is indivisible. So, so we're the one being in the explain, many bodies. Hmm? How does your science explain that? My science explains that because all, par all protons, for example, these are fundamental particles, mm. have identical properties. They all have ex exactly the same mass, they have the same value of charge, the same value of quantum spin. All, part all protons are absolutely identical. Mm. There's no uniqueness in a proton, which suggests that they're all acts of the one consciousness. Okay. okay? And that's just one route to this understanding, but there are more philosophical routes that I can come to. So, in a sense, we realize that if, if consciousness, if the universal consciousness is what we call God, mm. then it's the one God in the many bodies. In other words, it, I am God, and so are you, and so is everyone else. Do you see? I see, but I'm wondering for a lot of people watching this, the God word may turn them off a bit. I, ah. Is there another word you can use that is more mainstream? How would science explain God? Okay. The other word we can use in place of God is energy. Right. God is energy. There's no difference between God and energy. And I say that in a very definite way. As a scientist, I shouldn't be so dogmatic, but I'm allowed to be dogmatic on this on one occasion when I say God is energy, because that definition of God comes from the Bible. And uh. people are very dogmatic when it comes to the Bible because they believe the Bible to be the word of God. And so whatever is in the Bible, to people who believe in the Bible, it's truth. 
And this is the truth I get out of the Bible. The first, as a scientist, I read the Bible as a scientist, not as a Christian, as a scientist. And the first verse of St. John's Gospel says this, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Mm. Okay, as a scientist, I know Word is sound, sound is vibration, vibration is energy. Now, everyone is translating the Bible into modern language nowadays, mm. so I can translate that verse into scientific language. I can translate the first verse of St. John's Gospel into, in the beginning was the energy, and the energy was with God, and the energy was God. Gotcha! I've got my <laughs> definition for God out of the Bible, which is the revelation. What is energy? There's no separation. Okay. And when you think of it, the definition for God in religion is identical to the definition of energy in science. Mm. God was neither created nor destroyed. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. God is everywhere. Energy is everywhere. Mm. Everything that is, is of God. Everything that is, is of energy. 